just about time to rock as Toe gets ready to meet Leather. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They'll be led out by a man who rewrote Brett Favre's passing records at Southern Miss. It's Nick Mullins. You want to talk about a driven player, Parker. This guy is absolutely that person. He doesn't just have goals in this game. He wants to be remembered among the best to play the position, and he treats every game as an audition for that. It's a lofty goal to set for yourself, but we've seen his drive lead to some impressive games from him. Perhaps another one is in store today. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, he's going to air it out right away. That is incomplete. An early message that this secondary is going to be tested because even though it fell incomplete, it almost felt like a warning shot to get things going. Here's second and ten. Now back to throw. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. 18 yards the game for number 18. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They go play action here on first down. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Well, that's absolutely going to fire this defense up. They made it their mission to deny that completion, and they came through with a nice hit and knocked it incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They tried it there on the opening drive, but that ball's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Mullins. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. He'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And it's going to be another first down as he'll get him to the ground at the Lions 20-yard line. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down because guess what? That drive continues. Mullins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Vikings get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. They got to love that. Nine-play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. 
That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. No run back here for Raymond. This will be a touchback. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They're brought out by a former number one overall pick coming off one of his best seasons ever in year seven of his career, now in year eight, Jared Goff. I tell you what, when he's on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. Now the former Bear, this is David Montgomery. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Now Goff on first down. His throw incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Goff now to throw. A little short pass here taken in by Laporta. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the gun, here's Goff. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. Jack Fox now gets set to punt. Back deep, Brandon Powell. This will be fielded at the 17. It's a 41-yard punt, but just a net of 31 following the run back. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. They've got the 7-0 lead. Now they've got the football back after their defense got the stop CD. And you get the feeling if they could score here, they'd really have all the momentum on their side. And you just wonder right now, is the quarterback and the play caller totally in sync? Are they of one mind that, hey, what worked last time? Let's keep doing it until they stop us. Or do they go to a different section in the playbook, show them something different? Either way, they want a repeat of their first drive. Here's a run on first down that won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He will lose a yard, second and 11. I really like what he did there because he took his practice work and converted it to game action because he used his hands, got off the block, worked laterally and stayed to the outside, and finished off the runner for a loss. Second and 11. Going underneath, he's getting, puts it on the carpet, it's out, and this is scooped up by the Lions. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S, ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in the meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock.
So first and 10 now from the 30. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. First down, Detroit, 16 yards on the pickup. Partner, we always talk about how important third down is, but I think first down is equally important because everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they are able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? On second down, Montgomery. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Now a lot of room to maneuver there, and I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities, filled their gaps, held their place. No place for him to run. Yeah, it looked good. Everything got funneled to the nose tackle. They swallowed him up. Now gone. because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. And this one will be a 29-yard attempt. Badgley able to knock this one through, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive, and that's incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll look to throw here. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. That is caught, and he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I tell you what, third and ten, you look over, and you've got that punt team getting loose on the sideline, so that puts added importance on this play. You certainly don't want to see them on the field, and after a couple of incompletions, third time's the charm as they get the hook up here and pick up the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw again. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45, and it'll be territory. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. 
But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. We're going back to the same well. It's Hawkinson again. So five yards here, five on the play. And that will bring up second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. They'll look to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Detroit was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on the punt for Minnesota. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. And the drive starts with a completion left side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. On first down, gone. That's going to be caught by Josh Reynolds. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First down, Lions on a pickup of 13. Back to throw, golf. He's got a man here, it's Montgomery. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one good for 37 yards. This play is a thing of beauty when it works as designed because they let the running back slip out of the backfield and head down the sideline on a wheel route. Number one, it's easy for him to get lost. And number two, Really tough for the linebacker to run with him. And this ball's right on the money and leads to a big play. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now a play fake, and it's gone. This is caught. And he's brought down. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Montgomery trying to run inside, but nothing there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. Back in the end zone, can he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. They'll try to run wide side with Montgomery. And he's going to take it in for a Lion touchdown. A 
touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Lions have taken the lead. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So this drive spans seven plays, and it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taking it at about the one. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This is caught by Addison. Down the right sideline. Touchdown, Vikings. Jordan Addison, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Vikings are able to move back in front. One play. 80 yards, pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So out now come the Lions. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Goff on first down. And that one to the right side and incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called his penalties. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now it's Goff. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes. as that door arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand. And that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. To throw is gone. And it's knocked away and incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. On fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit.
Here's Powell on the return. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Osborne. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. The Vikings on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're gonna give him that much space, He's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. On the handoff, it's Madison. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. 48 yards for Alexander Madison. And the Vikings are able to stretch out their lead. I know you should keep the focus and the spotlight on the hero that just scored, but tackling's been an issue for this defense all game long. I can't set that aside. We just saw it again here. Missed tackles leads to his long touchdown run. Joseph on for the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. A drive there of just four plays, and it was capped off by a touchdown scamper from Alexander Madison. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Well, time for another look at this Lions offense. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Fake the handoff. Now go off. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack. What a quick start to the drive, but not for the team that really needed it. In only a few seconds, the opposing QB found himself on the turf, and the defense is celebrating second and long. Yeah. 
after the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. There's Goff. A quick throw there is incomplete. And this drive was almost over before it began, thanks to a great defensive effort. Sack on first down, followed by an incompletion. One more good rep, and they get off the field. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's gone. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. The defense shaking their heads. Not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. And as a quarterback, you always want to exploit gaps in the defense, and he finds one here. Crossing route, working from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. On first down, it's gone. And his throw here is incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Now gone. That's into the hands of Reynolds. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Goff now looking to throw. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. How about the coverage we just saw break out on third down? Dive defense, blanketed in the field with extra defensive backs and speed, unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. This offense returns to the fold along with running back Alexander Madison. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Here's a second and eight. Another carry now for Madison. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. They'll drop to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver. But a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Fielded at the 33. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Off in this Lions offense, set for a first and 10 at their 36-yard line. 
He'll look to throw. That is incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Goff. And that'll be caught by St. Brown. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Goff to St. Brown for the Detroit first down. Well, this hasn't really been a first half to remember on either side of the ball. But I think this kind of makes this an important drive. You'd love to get this back to a one-score game if you can. And that's good work there to get some yardage here and pick up the first down. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 27-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 27. Play action. It's golf. They're unable to connect, but a late flag comes in. And the contact may have come too early. So a P.I. call going to cost him there defensively. What did you see? Well, I think it's the right call, partner, because sometimes we'll see officials kind of let them play. But by the letter of the law, that's definitely a penalty. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. And the Lions are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Golf. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Lions have cut it back within a score. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Badgley on for the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. A drive that time of six plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. And this taken in at the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Here comes the blitz as they look to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion, set up another passing down here on third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Going for the deep ball. And incomplete on the deep ball. Well, they had that one snipped out defensively. That's a tough one to connect on when you've got multiple defenders in the area and it winds up incomplete. Here's Ryan right now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It's fielded at the 45. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And the Lions will have excellent field position here as they take over first and 10. We get a look at Amon Ra St. Brown as his offense readies for the next drive. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that, definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things, more touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. There he goes, left side. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Now that's the way you want to start a drive. Talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener. Now if you want to take a big shot over the top, you're all positioned to do so. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and one. Off play action. Here's gone. And his throw is incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. The Lions on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. They end up getting stumped twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. Here's Jack Fox now. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. Now these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball here before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second and nine. Now back to throw. Finding Hawkinson here on the out route. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 12-yard line. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and 10. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. On third down, he'll drop to throw. 
He lets one go deep for Addison. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. And here's Ryan right now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. And a fair catch is taken here, a step or two inside the 45-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return, and the Lions will take over. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. 44 yards rushing for him now to this point. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Now a second and two. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Third down and one. Here's Goff. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Close on third down. I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. And here now the punter, Fox, as he sends this one away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. They go play action here on first down. Now he's loose at the 40. And all the way out to the 45-yard line. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Looking to throw. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. That ball was tipped in the air, and while it ultimately fell incomplete, it caused a few anxious moments for the guy slinging it who's had quite a day. He knows how to get it into the end zone. He's throwing it really, really well, and maybe Lady Luck is on his side because he avoided his first interception of the contest. He'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's not quite going to get to the marker. It'll be a gain of eight on third and ten. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. So here come the Lions now. 
And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. Now Goff on first down. And that'll be caught. It's St. Brown. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 23 yards on the play. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Goff now to throw. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw, Goff. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. And they're not going to go quietly into this halftime break. They know they're in for a fight, so they're trying to make every possession count. They took the big shot there, but it winds up incomplete. So now third and ten. They had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion since. Goff throwing again. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 41-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. First and ten, Goff. That's to the tight end, Laporta. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. He hit his first. Now this one from 48 yards away. Badgley's kick is good, and that'll bring him back within a point. So a big play before the end of the half to get him into this spot, and they cash in with three. How about the one-two to the solar plexus on that one? The big play, the field goal, not much time left on the clock. That's the way to go into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Well, now how about this return? So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, 
to our Creative Village studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. Here comes Khalif Raymond from his end zone. And he returns this to the 22. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. 51 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. They'll go with a rookie from Alabama. It's Jameer Gibbs. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Goff now looks to throw. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll try the middle with Montgomery. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now a second and six. Gibbs straight ahead. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 36. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. On third down, they go Montgomery. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 15 yards for the Lions there and a first down. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. They'll run with Montgomery. 
Montgomery. They're able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Second and goal from the one. They'll try the air now with Goff. And he's got his man. It's caught for a Lion touchdown. Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Lions have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Goff looking to throw. And unable to connect. They don't get the two-point conversion here. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, uh, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Yeah, get it across the 35. It'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw here. And that is incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. Now here's Ryan right now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Amon Ross St. Brown and the rest of the Detroit Lions getting set for another series here. He's been his typical solid and reliable self, hasn't he, Charles? When you have that go-to receiver that you can count on in the situation where you absolutely have to have him, there's nothing better for anybody who's throwing the football. But the best part is the payoff. 
two touchdowns already. That's the bottom line when you throw the ball to a guy. Absolutely. Not over 100 yards right now, but he does have the two touchdown catches. Just a yard on the pick up there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. Straight ahead with Gibbs here. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 11 yards there and a line first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. Going back to Gibbs on first down. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. Up the middle, it's Montgomery. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. They'll come up facing third and five. Now it's gone. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Lions first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. From the 50, it's golf. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 19 yards that time for number 19. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Montgomery back to the ground and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. A loss of a full three yards and now it's second down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. Here's Michael Badgley ready for the field goal try. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. Badgley able to punch this one through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So three field goals that he's hit now. This last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick, right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. Oh. 
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Able to fight through one tackle. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run. Not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. 78 yards rushing for him now to this point. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. Jefferson going to go in motion right. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. It's a gain of a yard. Brings up third down and two. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and 10. Going to run with Madison again. Oh, nice move. <laughs> And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Mullins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second down and four. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent. And that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And Detroit getting set to go now. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. Second and ten. Yeah, 
And they'll send the tight end in motion. On second down, Montgomery. A great move by Montgomery. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. And even 100 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. Here comes a big one as this crowd gets up making some noise. It's third and short. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Montgomery on the counter, looking for an opening. Not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Going up the gut, Montgomery. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Goff on third down. That is caught. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now a throw complete to his fullback out of the backfield. It'll go down as a gain of six. And it'll be second down. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. Goff now looking to throw. He's got right on the short throw. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. They'll run it. Here's Montgomery. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. They're able to convert with a gain of four. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscle all over the field and getting pushed down it. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be second down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. On second down, here's Goff. 
He'll get this underneath to Montgomery. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Viking 16. 12 yards there as they move the chains. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. First down. Here's the run to Montgomery. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They outleveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Here's Gaul. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. And here, you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Here's Goff. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. So here comes a very important kick now for Michael Badgley. This to make it a two-score game. Badgley able to knock this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance cannot be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Here are the Lions now as they line up and kick this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Over the middle and complete to Addison. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it's second down. A good start there on this fourth quarter drive. They need more of what we just saw. Down a couple of scores, there's still time, all right? It's not like, you know, they're totally out of it, but they have to score quickly, and they're gonna need some big time plays, chunk plays, explosive plays. They need yardage on each snap. That's down the field for Jefferson. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Going for the knockout blow right there. I think if I'm up two scores, I'd be worried about an interception, but playing this way is what got them this lead. So you may as well ride it out to the end. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Back to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now a dump off here complete. So the completion good for just three. 
And that's going to bring up second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Back to throw again. And under the Lions pressure, he's brought down. Alex Anzalone from that outside linebacker spot gets in there. It's a loss of nine. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. They absolutely had to take some chances downfield trailing here in the fourth quarter. So why not go four verticals, send the guys downfield, say make a play? And that's one of the favored routes of offensive coordinators. You know why? Because receivers can be open at any point running that route. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. They'll try again here, second and 10. They'll set up to throw. Throw caught there by Osborne. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 18. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. A quick throw there he is incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're gonna try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Again, he'll drop to throw. Nowhere to turn this time and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. John Kaminsky in there to drop him as that clock continues to run. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Here's Greg Joseph now to try the field goal. From the left hash, this from 46. The kick by Joseph is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position with all three timeouts. I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. So the field goal got him back within one score, and now the focus lies on this onside kick. And the Lions are able to cover this one up. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. Got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. 
And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Jet sweep, and he's dropped right at the 40, gain of three. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with a minute 15 left to go in the second half. They'll come up now third and three. Golf. He's got his target. That's complete. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And the Lions will take the knee here with victory in the cards. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. But Charles, we were treated to an excellent game today, capped off by that second half comeback. This was a joy to watch. Entertaining for us. Not so much to the team who led at halftime. And now is leaving here, knowing that they let a win slip through their fingers. Tough one for them to carry home.